Hey, Shalom, Akim, Shalom. Before I get started, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to our powers. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Racha HaKadash, giving double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this truth, that are constantly ruling well through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai. Shalom to my beloved brethren that are out there pushing this word wholeheartedly in truth and in sincerity, that are not wavering to the left nor to the right. But constantly stand on that straight and narrow fighting for your crowns in these last days that we are truly living in. Shalom to the few sisters. Shalom also to the Israelite foreigners, those that have been scattered abroad amongst the other nations. But their sea line goes back to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hardy Shalom. I'm the brother Iraq coming back with another less the Lord willing, edify and feed the lambs of the Lord, which Lord willing is going to do like a concise, straight to the point uh, lesson concerning uh, Paul was certified by Yahweh Shai himself, you know? And, um, um, you know, Paul was one of those special souls that was set up to go preach unto the Israelite foreigners, okay? Um, Israel that fell into the ways of the heathen customs, okay? And, you know, Paul was given a dispensation to actually go and, uh, give the gospel of grace unto them, you know, from Yahweh Shai himself, you know, and it was a, a miraculous thing, you know, because Paul never thought that he would actually be put in that type of steed, but, you know, the Lord chooses whom he wants, you know, starting with the Most High, all the way down to Yahweh Shai, you know. So, um, with no further ado, I'm just going to jump straight into this. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1. It says, Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. The Lord have called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, have he made mention of my name. You know, and this is how all the uh, prophets are chosen, you know, because the the Heavenly Father and His Son, I. Right, you know, they know those spirits before they even are born onto the planet Earth. Before your mother and your father uh, lay down with each other through the act of sex, you know, and that, that seed sticks. Well, uh, the Most High puts that spirit to grow inside your mother's body, okay? And he knows you by name, okay? The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his beloved son, Yahweh Shai, knows you by name, okay? It says, um, and he have made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadows of his hands. Have he hit me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver? Have he hit me? Right. So now let's go over here to the book of uh, Galatians. OK, and I'm pretty much jump around in the book of Galatians. You know, I kind of want to just give my, you know, just a spiritual two cents uh, on Paul. OK. Being certified by Yahweh by Shemel Shai. This is um, Galatians chapter 1, verse 15. It says, But when it pleased the Most High, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I confer not with flesh and blood. Okay. In fact, let me read down to verse 17. It says, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned unto Damascus. OK, because, see, you got to go into the story of Acts. The uh, the ninth chapter, which we're going to read right now. OK, where Yahweh actually knocked Paul off of his high horse, you know, because Paul was you know, committing murder against the the believers of Yahweh Shai, you know? And so Yahweh Shai um, stopped Paul from, you know, what he was doing against, against those that believed in him, you know, which he blinded him. And then, you know, as Paul was blinded, you know, it doesn't go into all the details of what Paul was visiting, but um, one of the details that it does go into what, what Paul was visioning was uh, how uh, Ananias 
was going to come in, you know, was going to come unto Paul, you know, uh, so that way he could get his sight back. So in between that time, Paul could have been getting all types of revelations, you know, but you got to be spiritual to perceive that. Uh, this is this is Acts 9 and 1. It says, and Saul, yet breathing out of threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as journey and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. All right. So the Lord shined upon him. Right. The Lord shined upon him. OK. All right. And, you know, in this moment. The Lord spoke to him, you know, and asked him, you know, Saul, why is why kickest thou against the priests? pricks why persecutest thou me you know which he was which he was persecuting the believers you know but let's keep going right it says and as he journeyed he came near damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him saul saul why persecutest thou me and he said who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the sea, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. So it was told what was for Paul to do, okay, you know, and that's why, matter of fact, let me go back to uh, Galatians, like I said, I was going to jump around in Galatians a little bit, Galatians 1, and uh, verse 10, it says, for do I now persuade men or the most high, or do I seek to please men, for if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Amashiach, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men, okay? Because the Lord showed him what he was supposed to do, right? Show you that Yahweh Shai certified uh, Paul, you know, which when you look up the word uh, certify, what it means to certify means to officially recognize someone or something as possessing certain qualifications or meeting certain standards. So Paul was set up in the charge to uh, graft those back in that were without, you know, which was, which is a heavy office. Okay. Cause you had a lot of uh, Hellenization, especially during the Greek uh, empire, you know, amongst our people, you know, and then you had a, a, a lot of different, um, teachings amongst the other nations that our people were amongst and they were you know they were they were going off man you know following after heathenistic customs and you know those that try to bring forth a, a gospel but it wasn't the right gospel they wasn't bringing the right gospel of the lord you know so paul was in charge to preach the right gospel you know which was the real good news of of the kingdom concerning the kingdom concerning the most high Yahweh and concerning his son Yahweh Shai, right? Um now going back to um I'm sorry, verse 12, Galatians 1 and 12 it says, For I neither received it of men, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, right? So now going back to Acts 9 and 7, 7, it says, And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless hearing a voice but seeing no man and Saul arose from the earth and when his eyes were opened he saw no man but they laid him they led him by the hand 
and brought him into Damascus, right? Which uh, Damascus uh, is the capital of Syria, you know? So, uh, you know, during this time, you had a uh, you had an allegiance between uh, one of the sons of uh, Herod, uh, which I believe was uh, Herod Agrippa. Um, he was the son-in-law to uh, to uh, the king at that time. Um, what was his name? Artisus. I think his name was Artisus. Let me check that out. Uh, let me see. I believe his name was Artisus. Bear me for a second. All right. Uh, this is uh Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse uh like it. eleven verse. 32 it says in damascus the governor under aretas right which aretas goes back into the word grave the king uh kept the city of the damascians with a garrison desirous to apprehend me you know which i'll later get to that lord willing in the, uh in a later chapter of uh acts the ninth chapter you know but um aretas if I'm pronounce his name right, was a Arabian king. You know, he was he was the uh, you know he was the king of uh Assyria. You know, at that time, you know, and show you, you know you know just another example show you that you know our people were scattered abroad amongst you know what I'm saying those different those different land masses. You know, Philippi, Macedon. You know, so they you know Paul was traveling all over, man. All right, uh, to uh, to go preach unto Israel, you know. Um, matter of fact, let me keep going in Acts real fast. It says, um, Acts nine and nine. It says, and he was there. He was there. He was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Which we know the letter. I'm sorry, not the letter. The number three goes back into uh, um, understanding. You know, so you know Paul was getting a a, a heavy a uh, portion okay of the of the gospel you know that's why a lot of times when you read uh into uh paul's writing you know paul's writings are not something easily to understand you know that's where a lot of men they don't understand uh the writings of paul you know all right because you know paul had a uh a, a, a heavy portion through this through the holy spirit you know what i'm saying but you know, during that time, right? Let me keep going. It says he was without sight and neither did eat nor drink, right? Because Paul was uh, praying and fasting. So during the time of him praying and fasting, he was getting visions, okay? And it says in, um, matter of fact, before I continue, before I continue on to the next point, hold on. Before I continue reading, I'm sorry. Let me go over here to the book of uh, Second Ezra. And Lord one, this is making sense. Second Ezra. Chapter 14, and um, I'm gonna start at verse. Uh, let me try to just get straight to the point on this one. Second Edges 14 and 40 it says, And I took it and drank, and when I had drunk of it, my heart uttered, and understanding and wisdom grew in my breast, for my spirit strengthened my memory, and my mouth was opened and shut no more. The highest gave understanding unto the five men, and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told, which they knew not. And they sat 40 days, and they wrote in the day, and at night they ate bread. As for me, I spake in the day, and I held not my tongue by night. In 40 days they wrote 204 books, and it came to pass when the 40 days were fulfilled that the highest spake, saying the first that thou has written, published openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. You see, so the Lord gives understanding to the to the worthy to be able to publish these books, and then for the for the worthy to understand what's written in these books, contained in these books. You know, All right? And it's not it's not 
for the unworthy. You see what I'm saying? It says verse 46, but keep the the but keep the 70 last, right? The complete amount of number, that thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise amongst the people. For in them is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. You see, so the Lord opens up men's minds and he endows them with you know uh understanding, you know, which is the Holy Spirit, the Harakah Kadash, right? You know, that's that's how we get uh, inspired is from on high. Yahweh Bashim Abishai inspires us, right? Um, so going back to Acts 9 and 10 now, it says, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, okay, which Ananias, that was a, a, a Israelite, okay? Because why would the Lord choose Ananias from Damascus? OK, if he wasn't uh, a servant of Yahweh Shah, because the, 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 the heathen have no part in our ministry, the heathen have no part in serving Yahweh by Shema Shah. See what I'm saying? So Ananias from Damascus was an Israelite, OK, who was a follower of Amashiach Yahweh Shah. Um, it says, and to him said the Lord in a vision Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquired in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and he hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. So that shows that Paul was getting uh visions that was one of the visions amongst many other visions that he was getting that it doesn't make mention of you know but again they had to be heavy uh revelations that's you know the lord deals with many prophets that way heavy uh revelations and visions you know uh john on the island of patmos ezekiel you know what i'm saying daniel all right there's plenty and countless count there's plenty of uh, prophets, all right, men of the Lord that have gotten visions or that insight from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh okay? Uh, verse 13 now it says, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to, the, to thy saints at Jerusalem, and here he have offered authority from the chief priest to bind it that call on thy name but the lord said unto him go thy way for he is a chosen vessel again going back to the word um certified right a uh, vessel unto me to bear my name before the gentiles which are the israelite foreigners and kings and the children of israel for i will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake you know uh so let's go uh, to the book of uh, uh, Galatians, you know what? No, I think I grabbed everything out of Galatians that I needed. Um, yep, so I'm gonna go over to the book of Ephesians now, right? Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm gonna start at the point, all right? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3, it says, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words now this is paul speaking right whereby when you read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of amashiach which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit all right Remember, the Lord said he do have nothing but he of his seek unto his servants, the prophets. OK, you know, he opened their minds to this holy understanding. You see, it says that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of this same body and partakers of his promise in Amashiach by the gospel. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of the most high given uh, unto me by the effectual working of his power okay by his power 
right? The Lord ordained Paul. And it was such a shock that Paul was changed of his style of teaching, how he believed, okay, and whom he was preaching sincerely, right? Let's go back to Acts 9 and 20. It says, and straightway he preached a Mashiach in the synagogue that he is the son of the Most High. <laughs> so he was calling him Yahweh Shai. He was calling on Yahweh. He was calling on Yahweh Shai, right? But all that heard him was amazed and said, is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt in Dam at Damascus, proving that this is very a Mashiach. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. You know, those wicked scribes and Pharisees, those that had the high seat, you know, didn't want to come under the obedience of the true teachings of the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, you know, and they were still being carnal, you know. Um, but it says, uh, but it says, but their land was shut, was known of Saul and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. So, you know, you had certain Israelites that truly believed, you know, and they helped, uh, Paul out, you know? And, and this was, uh, like I said, this was one of the governors that was um, in Syria that, you know, put forth the decree to uh, actually have uh, Paul put to death. You know, when you read, matter of fact, let me just read that again, because I didn't read that next verse after that in the book of uh, Corinthians. OK, let me see. Corinthians, second Corinthians, I believe it's 11. Second Corinthians um 11 and uh 32 it says in damascus the governor under aretas the king kept the city of damascenes with a garrison desires to apprehend me and through a window in a basket was i let down by the wall and escaped his hand so they wanted to put paul to death because of you know the teachings you know because he was teaching the, the sincere gospel which ain't nothing new today you know they pers they pers they 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 not they don't hate us they hate Yahweh Shai that dwelleth in us, so you know they they hated Paul at that time too because he stirred up trouble in the cities. He was preaching things that people didn't want to hear, you know. But he was sent forth to uh, be in charge of the uh, the uh, the Israelite uh, foreigners, you know. All right, which first it was Peter, you know. And then, you know, Paul took over that steed, you know what I'm saying, which was a great office, you know. So Paul had a heavy portion uh, through the spirit, you know what I'm saying. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to just do this a quick take, you know. Um, was, I was reading Galatians and uh, just wanted to go through that through the Holy Spirit. So Lord willing, this was edifying. So giving all praises and glory to our powers. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash, Rakate Yahweh, Rakate Yahweh Shai, Rakate Yahweh, and Rakate Yahweh Shai. Shalom, Akiyam. God damn, why is this shit bad?